Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are looking at practice problem number two for drawing shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams. So in this case, we have a simply supported beam with a somewhat randomly placed distributed load and a point load residing somewhere inside of that. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to use our free body diagram to find the reactions A and B, and it turns out that those are 35 kilonewtons and 45 kilonewtons respectively. And now we can set up our shear force diagram and bending moment diagrams. And now we're ready to start drawing our shear force diagram from the left to the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our single free body diagram that we're going to be working with. Uh, right now we'll take the virtual cut just to be to the right of uh, point A here. Uh, so we do know that we will have this reaction here of 35 kilonewtons pressing up. And then we'll have some internal shear uh, pressing down like that. Turns out that, just to the right, that this has to be 35 kilonewtons pressing down to counteract that. And when we have a shear force pressing down to the right of a virtual cut, that is positive value. So this will be 35 kilonewtons um, on the positive side. So just we'll just draw it on maybe like that. Boom. So now the shear is not going to be changing in this region because there's uh, there's nothing changing in here. There's no distributed load. So this is going to go right on over to here. And what we should probably do is this will help us if we do draw on our markers at each basically at each point of interest where we're getting some sort of change, uh, notable change. You know, let's draw that a little bit thinner, so boom, we'll draw this down like that. Um, this is going to be another notable point where we have that point load. Um, the end of the distributed load will be another point of interest, and uh, we can draw on the, the end of the beam there, just like that. Cool. Alright, so let's change back to blue here. Now, so this, this shear in this region is going to be a constant 35 kilonewtons. Now in this region here, we'll basically have to add on, we'll, we'll extend this free body diagram now to, uh, to go right up until the left of this point load. So somewhere along here, we're going to be getting that distributed load. And we're getting 2 meters worth of 10 kilonewtons per meter. So by the time we're just to the left of this point load, we have applied 20 kilonewtons pressing down. All right, so when we draw the shear just to the left of this point load, we'll have 35 going up, 20 going down. Uh, that means that we have to have another 15 going down, which is still that positive sense. So this is going to drop linearly down to 15, wherever that is. It'll be like there or something, approximately. So this will be 15 kilonewtons. All right, now when we draw just to the right of the point load, we'll extend our free body diagram just to the right of it. So we're basically going from A right out to here. Uh, so we're going to have to include the uh, the point load pressing down there. So that's another 20 kilonewtons pressing down. So we have 40 going down, 35 going up, which means that we're going to static for a static equilibrium. We're going to have to have the shear force of five pointing up. It's going to be opposite the positive sign convention. So the shear here will be five in the negative side. So we're dropping down to negative five, uh, which is down here. Boom, just like that. And uh, it's important to notice that, yeah, of course, we're just we're taking that step there, and the difference between this point uh, or the drop here is actual is actually equal to the magnitude of that point load. But it's best to just kind of uh, keep adding on to the shear force, or sorry, the free body diagram like we're doing. All right, so now we're going to draw the free body diagram basically right up to the end of this distributed load, basically adding on another four times ten kilonewtons per meter, so we can cross this out. This is going to be, well, we had that 20 plus 40, so we're now getting 60 pressing down. Um, so you can do all of this. You can have 60 plus 20 minus 35, and that's going to be a shear force of 45 in the negative side because the shear will have to be pointing up. Or another way that you can interpret it, uh, a, a way that I sort of prefer to do it in this type of, in, in this type of region, uh, is to, I know that this has to drop another 40 uh, kilonewtons because it's 10 kilonewtons per meter over 4 meters and so if we go from 5 we drop down 40 that's going to bring us down to 45. Now this slope because it's the same distributed load is going to be the exact same slope that we had in this region the only thing we have is we have the step down where that point load was um, but I, however you want to calculate that we're going to end up down here at negative 45 kilonewtons. Now in this region there's nothing changing so the shear is basically going to come straight across right over to our support here at B, and we're going to end here at 
45. Now we do want to check this to make sure. Um, we'll draw the free body diagram sectioning from the right hand side. Basically starting here just looking to the left we have 45 kilonewtons pressing up because that is that reaction force and so we have to have some amount of shear and then this obviously has to be a magnitude of 45 and it is opposite that positive sense so we're going to be negative 45 shear. So look at uh, it looks like we've done this correctly. Now that is a really important check to do in these types of problems. If, you, if you're not matching up here, chances are you've made a mistake and I would go back and make sure you figure out where that is because this actually has to match up uh, no matter which side you draw the free body diagram from. All right, so now we're ready to look at the bending moment diagram. When we see a simply supported beam, we know that the internal bending moment at each end is going to have to be equal to zero because these aren't fixed rigid connections that are uh, being able to resist some sort of moment. So we have to start at zero and end at zero. And then like we've been talking in previous videos where we have an area on the shear force diagram that is on the positive side, we take that area as the change in magnitude on the bending moment diagram. For horizontal lines on the shear force diagram, we get a linear change. And for sloped lines on the shear force diagram, we get a parabolic change. So looking at this, this area here, the base times height, that's uh, 35 times four meters. So 35 kilonewtons times four meters. That is an area of 140 kilonewton meters. So that's gonna bring us up to a change in magnitude with a linear change like that to a 140 kilonewton meters. And again, that is a change in the positive direction as we're going from left to right. When we look at this next section here, we actually have a bit of a composite shape. We have a triangle on the top and a rectangle on the bottom. So we need to take the area of both of those and add them together. So the area of the triangle on top is going to be one half base times height. The base is two meters and the height is 35 minus 15. That is 20 kilonewtons. So one half times two times 20 is going to give us 20 kilonewton meters. And then when we take the area of this rectangle here, it's base times height is going to be two meters times uh, 15 kilonewtons. That's going to be 30 kilonewton meters. When we add those together, we get 50 kilonewton meters. So the change in magnitude here is 50 kilonewton meters. So we add that to this. So we get 140 plus 50. That's going to bring us up to 190. And we get that. Uh, sorry, this is actually this parabolic curvature in this region because we have a sloped line. Now, when we look at this next region here, we're actually looking at areas in the negative side. So this is going to be a change in magnitude that's pushing us towards the negative direction. And again, we have this composite area. We have a rectangle and we have a triangle. So for the area of the triangle, we have one half times base times height. The base is uh, four meters and the height is 45 minus five. So that is going to be times 40 kilonewtons, which is going to give us an area of 80 kilonewton meters. The area of the rectangle here is uh, four meters times five kilonewtons. So that's going to be 20 kilonewton meters. When we add those together, we get 100 kilonewton meters. So we need to make a change in magnitude here of 100 kilonewton meters uh, towards the negative side. So that's going to bring us from 190 minus 100 down to 90 kilonewton meters. And again, this is parabolic and the shape will Let's see, we're gonna be like this. All right, something like that. Uh, so that'll bring us down to 90 kilonewton meters. And then the area of this last rectangle here, again, this is going to push us towards the negative side. Its area is base times height, two meters times 45 kilonewtons. That is equal to 90 kilonewton meters. And uh, change, in ni change from 90 kilonewton meters minus 90, that's gonna bring us right down to zero with a nice straight linear line that's gonna pop us right down to zero there. And that's exactly what we were looking for. We expected this thing to end at zero, so it looks like we've done this right. You can be pretty comfortable that uh, if you're ending up at zero like you expect, or you know if you're ending up with the, the shear force that you expect here that you have done the problem correctly. Um, the only other thing that uh, your professor might ask you for is what does the deflected shape of this thing look like? Now, in this case, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just going to sag down and it's probably going to sag a little more to the right. But basically, sometimes your professor will just be asking you to say, 
that yeah, I understand that when I'm pressing on a beam from above with two loads like this, that it's going to sag down in the middle. Um, you'll see why we're practicing this. It sort of it sort of resembles the the inverse of your bending moment diagram. Like if you flipped this about the axis, it kind of sags down. Um, if you live in a country where you draw your bending moment diagram on the bottom, some uh, that's the convention in some countries. That's basically opposite to how I'm doing it then your deflected shape will sort of follow just that profile. Um, but you'll see in the next couple of videos, once we get into overhanging beams and stuff like that, that uh, we'll be able to draw more interesting deflected shapes and we'll be able to pick off items um, like inflection points and things like that from the bending moment diagrams. But we'll see that in a couple of videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys there.